Hey, thanks for tuning into the video. My name's Elliot. This is Revamped Outdoors. We're going to talk a little bit about files. All right, so I started this adventure, I'd say, hmm, a couple months ago. I like to frequent the uh, estate auctions, find some really good deals on some really cool old hardware. A lot of these times at these auctions, these guys will you know, stand up on the block. It's usually at somebody's estate. Um, they're kind of just on trailers. When they try to sell something that's not really selling, they'll throw in another toolbox, another set of tools or something. And when they did that, they threw in a box, a toolbox, that had a bunch of old files in it. And I would love to show you a picture of that, but of course I forgot to take that picture. So uh, just take my word on this. It was a pretty large toolbox. I said, well, you know, it's a bunch of files. They're just surface rusted for the most part. None of them were really broken or bent or anything like that. So I figured, well, maybe there's a way to restore these. So looking around on the interwebs there for a little bit, and I found a cool video by Blackbeard Projects. If you're not subscribed to him, awesome channel, does a lot of cool stuff. And he had restored a Nicholson bastard file, like a 16 incher. And I thought that was pretty cool. So I started looking at the files a little bit more. And it turns out the majority of them were Nicholson made in the USA. Basically, all I did was use uh, white table vinegar, put it into a large Tupperware container, dumped those in there. I think I left them in for about three weeks, maybe about a month or so. Then I tried to neutralize them in a bath of uh, water and baking soda. I decided, well, what am I going to do for handles for these things? Should I turn them on the lathe? Should I print them out on the 3D printer? What should I do? So I went into Fusion 360 and I designed up uh, a handle at first. And it was kind of like the rounded teardrop style handle that you see on a lot of files. Just really didn't like how that turned out. Wasn't a big fan of it. So I went back in and tried to model a tool handle more like a uh, screwdriver style, you know, like straight sides, had some uh, little bevels and channels cut into it so it gives you a little bit better grip onto the handle itself. So it turns out after I modeled it up in Fusion 360, it fit really well in my hand. It worked really well for what I wanted to use them for. So I decided instead of printing out uh, massive amounts of these that I would just print one out in kind of like three perimeter layers um, and then I would try and cast that in some sort of plastic. So I've been messing around with uh, casting things in this, this two-part urethane from Smooth On. I think it's Smoothcast 320. I've been using that now for a couple years. Uh, actually the plastic that I had from Smooth On, the Smoothcast 320 that I used in this video was actually purchased I think about six years ago so the shelf life on it is pretty outstanding it's been through a move across the country it's been all sorts of stuff and it's still producing uh, viable parts when I use it so what I did was I took that 3d printed handle and then I took that and I casted it in a silicone uh, mold max 60 silicone from smooth on as well I casted that in a one part mold hindsight I probably should have did it in a cylinder, like a, a small PVC tube, maybe like a, a two inch, like schedule 40, just PVC tube would have worked a whole lot better um, for the mold material. And I would have saved a whole lot of mold material, but I made, you know, it is what it is. I made the mold box out of acrylic and uh, just hot glued that all up together, poured that in, hot glued the base of the handle to the bottom and then poured in the mold max 60 let that cure for whatever it is about 20 hours or so and then i could pour in uh, the urethane for the handles so the smoothcast 320 is a, a volumetric measure one by one so one part of part a one part of part b and uh it it's a very fast set i bought this stuff to be very very quick so what you do is just mix it in. I add in my own uh, smooth on pigment colors. You can get a whole series of colors for like under, I think under 15 bucks. It might be up to like $20 now, but it's worth it. Use a small drop of that color additive into the urethane and it turns it whatever color you want. So I messed around with that a little bit. I got about 10 handles off of that. And that was pretty much all I wanted to do was to just make a, a set of files that I actually would use in the shop. I drilled out 
the urethane handles on the drill press. So I picked a little bit smaller size uh, drill bit, twist drill, than the actual tang of the file itself. So for tool handles, you can buy uh, different brass furls and stuff, but you can just go to the hardware store and get yourself the, uh, the appropriate size aluminum tubing, right? And so that's not going to rust over time or anything like that. So I figured why not just buy $3 in aluminum tubing, cut the size that I need for each of the, the tool handles and just throw those on there. It seemed to work out pretty well. So I just cut those into the appropriate length for the furl section of the file handles and just super glued those on so they would stay in place. So I just used CA glue just to hold their position on there. And then I pounded in the tang on the file itself and that spread out the urethane plastic enough to put pressure on the furl and keep the actual file into the handle. And it seemed to work out pretty well. They're in there really snug. Once I had all these file handles completed, I decided I needed something to where I could actually hang these files up in my workshop. And I have another video up here somewhere that where I designed a French cleat system. So I just cut out some plywood strips at 45 degree angles and I have those mounted above my workbench in the garage, AKA workshop, because I have an attached garage. So I use that as a workshop because why would you park a car in a garage, right? So basically what I did is I just used my models that I already had in Tinkercad set up, modified it to work a little bit with these files, and it ends up holding about eight files uh, per section of French cleat. I think it's around 280 millimeters or so of your cleat that you use, and you can hang these up in the shop. Seems to work well. They rest in there really nicely because they are molded to, uh, they print to the actual parabolic shape of the bottom of the file so they rest in there and don't they don't come out so i'm really happy with how it turned out there's some things you know naturally i would have i would have changed with this i would have definitely used a better neutralizing agent on the files because i think they are still there is some still residual vinegar left on there they are kind of getting eaten up a little bit quicker than i thought they would also when i took them out i used a, a rem oil so it's basically uh, Remington's kind of oil that like they're branded oil essentially it's almost I think it's probably a water displacement formula similar to WD-40 I don't think it's an actual like lubricating agent so I think what I would use the, the next time is maybe some used motor oil by you know or something a little bit thicker maybe some three-in-one oil something that might penetrate um, some of those porous surfaces a little bit and uh, kind of protect it from rusting in the future. Uh, it's a really great way to kind of restore old files, especially when you get them at a place like an auction or a garage sale or something where the teeth are still good, a little vinegar soaked bath, and they're, they're cutting like they're brand new. If you have any questions, always put them down in the comments below. If you'd like the STL files, let me know. I will post those up for not only the French cleat system as well as the grip. Uh, for the most part, I'll probably, I'll probably just do that as I post this video, I'll put them out on Thingiverse. And there'll be a link down in the description if you want them. But either way, leave a comment, let me know you want them, because nobody ever reads the descriptions anyway. But, well, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you found it entertaining. If you did, maybe give a like, maybe consider subscribing. But until next time, till the next video, till the next time my face is on the internet, keep your amps up and your filament dry.